Hi, this is Catherine Roseline with Working Geek here at Spiel 2018. I'm sitting here with Rafael Tönes from Game Brewer and he's yes. here to talk about Hi. Festo. Festo, indeed. So, please, so, tell me about this lovely, colorful yes, game. Yes, I know, it's all the colors <laughs> of the rainbow. So, Festo is actually an annual feast in the mm -hmm. kingdom of Glutama where halflings gather every year uh -huh. because they basically eat to their heart's content. Which so is, it's, you know, important oh, for halflings. Very, very important. Yes. We all know how much halflings love their food and their drinks, so... And uh, what we're going to do in the game is try to gather ingredients. So you have actually all these ingredients that you see here that are sold by different kinds of races. So we have trolls, for instance, selling some chicken, the pixies sell some honey, etc. So we have these different ingredients and we're going to try and collect them and then eventually try to cook up these dishes that you see here that will so give cute. us... <laughs> right, I know, it's really adorable. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to try to uh, cook up those dishes and uh, there's actually two ways to play the game you can just collect the dishes by itself and it, there's a bit of set collection there because the more different types of dishes you have the more victory points you'll collect on top of the victory points that and this you're one requires get. one green one and then three three of one color of one specific yeah, color. yeah. so this you, is three blue and then two of one specific exactly color. yes so some dishes require actually six resources but they give these are the main courses so they require and they give obviously lots of points. and give and you more points, points. Are down here. yeah that's exactly how it works but on top of it all if you know the game you can also play which is interesting with the backs of some of the dishes ah. because they give you special abilities as well so for instance the drinks to give just one example uh, will allow you whenever you collect uh, certain uh, resources well you'll have to actually you, you can get some extra or you can have actually have to pay less whenever you spend a certain ah. color so which makes it fun but at first how the game works uh, is well we start actually off every round we're flipping one of those cards, so we have event cards, and there's four of them that you choose randomly at the beginning of the game. And you're going to flip one, and there's going to be a special condition. So this, for instance, says in the cooking phase, well, if you cook up a dish, you're going to get extra victory points, to give you one example. So it kind of steers you in one direction. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is the star player is going to roll those dice, and we're going to cover up the spaces uh, that match with the numbers here because you see ah, there's actually so there's all the four there. another four so it actually six. gets exactly and so the things that are not covered are the ones that are available now? exactly how do you guess <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting thing is everybody starts with six of these meeples so we're going to place them off the board to give the mm -hmm. example and so in turn order starting with the star player who's green well green can decide to place well no meeple at all he can place one and up to six it's really how he wants it and all at the same time and all at the same time so he has to make that decision so for instance can he green place several in the same yeah, place absolutely yeah. so, if I go so he could like do this. this yeah but he also can be i'm going to keep some of them actually okay. for the second phase so right. he's going to do that so yellow's going to do the same red is going to do the same blue as well so can let's... he go in the same place as someone yeah, else yeah absolutely and it's actually a majority type game so you try to get a majority into the different locations now let's say this was the end of the first phase so we've placed a few of them and now we're going to roll the dice again so you have the honors of rolling them again and so now we're going to cover up well six still gets covered twice and then one gets covered now so now which is really nice for the green player because the green player is all alone and he knows that no he has a majority there. there. And now again, starting with the star player, everybody has to place all of their remaining meeples. Uh -huh. So yellow, go ahead, you can do that. Yellow, let's say, could try and steal a majority from blue and red could be like, I'm gonna actually do this and I'll go at the grocery store. Uh, yeah, okay. so if green could have potentially done could that. Could have done that as well, mm -hmm. exactly. And so once all the meeples are down, that's when we're actually gonna go race by race and then you have a decision. If you have an absolute majority, you can remove all of your meeples and you'll get all of the ingredients that are there. Mm -hmm. But you can also mix and match. You can say, well, for every meeple that I remove, I'm gonna take away one ingredient and I can always use one, but just one meeple to use the special power of that race because uh -huh. they also have an ability. So the trolls, for instance, exactly say that you can move one cube of one color to an adjacent. Meaning that if I have the majority there as well, I can then take yes. that, that cube in addition to the others. Pretty, yeah, you get mm -hmm. it, that's it. So for instance, the pixies are going to allow you to actually move another worker on the pixie. So you could be like, well, red is going to move this one and say, well, you know what? This red guy is going to move somewhere else. Because he's not really much useful. And he's like, maybe I didn't want to be on blue or I just did it that way. He's got an interesting uh, moving mechanic yeah. here. So choice. stuff is going to move all the time and it's 
it's interesting because being first is interesting because if there is a tie, the first player breaks the tie on top of the second one, etc. And they make the decisions that can maybe yeah. change the decisions later on for yeah, the players. Exactly. And that is how it plays. That Fantastic. is Festo. How long does it typically take? It's about 45 minutes to an hour. So it's it's like a good family game. It's ages 8 and up. So Fantastic. it's very accessible. And beautiful. So definitely right. positive for the family. Yes, absolutely. It's very much aimed at family. And 2 to 5 players? It's 2 to 5. Fantastic. Thank you so yeah. much. That is Festo from Game Brewer.